Welcome to Scott Cooks. Today we're going to be making Grandma's Meatloaf. Not actually my Grandma's Meatloaf, but that's, uh, that's just what we're going to call the recipe. Grandma's Meatloaf. Pretty straightforward. We're going to use three pieces of bread, maybe two, a uh, half a cup of milk, small onion, um, teaspoon of vegetable oil, half a cup tomato paste, an egg, some Worcestershire, some salt, some pepper, a um, pound of, uh, I have a mix of uh, pork, beef, and veal, and some dark brown sugar, and some apple cider vinegar. And I'll put this uh, recipe and the ingredients in the description box for you. Let's go ahead and get all the ingredients out and start mixing it up, and we'll show you how I'm going to cook it. Okay, to start with, we're going to need some bread. If you're using regular old white Wonder Bread or something, you probably need about three pieces to about a pound of meat. Uh, I'm using this artisan bread. It's really thick, almost twice as thick as a regular piece. So I'm going to be using two pieces of this. And the first thing you want to do is cut off the crust. We don't want the crust in here. So we're going to get two pieces of bread for me. We're going to cut the crust. We're going to crumble it up and throw it in the bowl. All right, there's my two pieces of bread. Um, get the crust off of it, and I'm just going to take it and crumble it into small pieces all right into the bottom of the bowl. All right, I've moved the uh, bread crumbs over to a different bowl. I'll show you why. Um, they're crumbled up. We're going to take a third cup of whole milk. I'm just going to pour it in there. Let it absorb the milk. If you ever made an old-fashioned meatloaf, you might recognize this step. And you might know what's coming next. Alright, set yourself a timer. We're going to let that sit for five minutes. Alright, the next step is going to take place in a skillet. You just want to get your oil hot, and we're going to cut up the onion. And we're going to cook the onion down in um, just a few minutes. We'll be cooking the onion about seven minutes um, till it just gets tender. And then um, we'll get it out of the oil and drain it. Okay, in case you were wondering about that bread over there, five minutes has passed. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this over to the sink in a strainer. And we're going to strain the milk out of it. We're going to get in there and squeeze it if we have to. We're going to get all the milk out of it we can. And then we're going to take what's the uh, breadcrumbs minus the milk and put them into our mixing bowl. I know that's a crazy step, but is Grandma ever wrong? No. All right, I've got the uh, milk drained, as much as I could anyway. You're always going to have a little left over, see it? Can't get it all out. I got most of it out. That just goes over in the mixing bowl. Uh, over here, in the skillet. I'm just going to cook these onions down. You can Chop them up as fine or as thick as you want. I like a little bite on mine. I like to bite into a nice piece of cooked onion in my meatloaf. We're gonna do that in about seven minutes or so. All right, into the mixing bowl where we've put the milk-soaked breadcrumbs. We're gonna be doing salt and pepper, or if you know me, I'm gonna be doing this. Uh, we're gonna do a Tablespoon. Let me remember. Let me remember. Uh, yeah, one, one tablespoon Worcestershire and a quarter cup tomato paste. Uh, that's gonna be way more than a quarter cup, so I'll have a Tupperware handy when I open this to save it for my next thing I do. And of course, one egg. And if you're not real good at cracking eggs, crack your egg in another bowl first, and then put it in. Um, I'll show you how to crack an egg. Very simple. Get a nice hard flat surface and give it one nice good tap. That egg is cracked and then you can just pop it across and in it goes. No shell. You never want to do that. Okay? Never do that because what you do is you drive the shell fragments up into the yolk 
and you're very likely to get a shell into your whatever it is you're making. So one flat down like that, it'll crack halfway through. You just take two hands and pop it right open. No shell. All right, got my tomato paste, my egg, my salt and pepper, my onions, my Worcestershire, one tablespoon, and my milk soaked bread. I'm now just going to combine all of this. All right, and to that, I'll be adding the meat. Let's see if I can get that to focus for you. Is that focus? Yeah, meatloaf, beef, veal, pork. You can just use plain burger, use turkey, what, whatever. Whatever you guys want. Um, I've got a pound here, so I'll be using this. I'm going to add this to the other stuff in the bowl. Probably just use my hand and mix the heck out of it. Then we're going to form it. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do because we're using the Ninja. I'll show you how we're going to do that. All right, what we're going to do is take our meatloaf mixture in our trusty pan. Uh, this is the pan you've seen me cook cornbread in, eggs in, bacon in. I cook all kinds of stuff in this because it'll fit right in the rack. I can drop it right down in there. We're going to take this meatloaf. We're going to form it into the pan until we have a meatloaf pie. Uh, I'm still going to call it meatloaf. And uh, then I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it after that. It's pretty neat. All right, there's our meatloaf. I've taken the rack, inverted it, set this pan straight down on it. Now what we're going to do is add one and a half cups of water to the bottom of the Ninja Foodie. One and a half cups of water. All right, we've got one and a half cups of water into the bottom. We've went ahead and dropped our rack with the meatloaf in it. And we are ready to pressurize. Let's go over the seal. Get our lid on. Jiggle it around, so make sure we're on seal. Power up. Pressure high. I am going to go 16 minutes and do a quick release. 16 minutes, quick release. While we're waiting for this, we're gonna go ahead and make the topping for the meatloaf. That's where the brown sugars and um, <clears throat> um, apple cider vinegar and stuff comes into play. So we're gonna put that together and have it ready and then we're gonna finish this off um, on broil. No sense doing, you don't understand why I'm doing broil because I got a pan in there. So air crisp wouldn't work. Uh, it wouldn't get to the bottom. So there's no sense doing the air crisp. We're just gonna do the broil, get the heat right down on it, finish it up. Okay, in a bowl. The other half of the uh, tomato paste, quarter cup. I went ahead and added more than a quarter a cup because another quarter cup wouldn't have allowed me to have enough left over for anything else, so I'm just gonna use it up. No big deal. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put two tablespoons of packed dark brown sugar in now. Three tablespoons apple cider vinegar. Don't try any other kind of vinegar. It's not going to work right. If you don't have apple cider vinegar, just don't do the recipe until you get it. Trust me, it makes a big difference. And lastly, uh, one more tablespoon of Worcestershire. I'm going to move this to a bigger bowl because I added all the extra tomato paste. <laughs> so my bowl's not big enough. So we're gonna get this in the bigger bowl. We're gonna whisk it all together and just let it set. And uh, this will be our topping, which we'll bake on top of the meatloaf when it's finished pressure cooking. And lastly, um, another little dash of salt and pepper. Or in my case, this kind of salt and pepper. All right, all I'm gonna do now is uh, get this incorporated. This is going to get real thick. All right, let me work on that. And that is that. Is that thick or what? I can barely shake it off the spoon. All right, I'm just going to let that sit. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to get out some Yukon Gold potatoes, cut them up into some small wedges. And because once I pull the meatloaf out and let it sit to rest, um, I'm gonna pressure cook some potatoes real quick and then air crisp them. So we have some nice crispy potatoes on the side for this meatloaf. Just gonna cut up uh, one small and two medium small uh, Yukon Golds. If they look really yellow, 
Well, it's because they are. These are Yukon Golds. And what I'm going to do with them is just toss them right over here in the basket. And when the meatloaf comes out, uh, I'll make sure I still got enough water in the bottom. And I'm going to pressure cook these for just uh, like six minutes. Quick release. And they'll already be in the basket. I just hit the air crisp and go. And uh, that way the meatloaf will be rested for about 10 minutes. I'll put a little piece of foil over it. These will come out. I'll probably steam up some uh, green beans as well. And that's your dinner. All right, that's that. Uh, I'm not going to season these until after they're pressure cooked. Right before I, right before I uh, air crisp, I'll hit them with some Himalaya in there. Uh, oh, by the way, over here we do have pressure, and we're we're already rolling. We went 16 here, so we got a, um, a few more minutes, about six more minutes on that. 16 minutes, quick release. I went ahead and pulled it out, took my topping, iced the cake. <laughs> So I put it all over. Uh, first I drained the grease uh, that was built up in the pan. Um, some of the grease overflowed, so I went ahead and just cleaned the whole the whole foodie out. Uh, we're gonna pop this back in now. Let's see if it's still hot. Eh, not bad. Into the pot we go. This time we're gonna use this lid. And we're gonna go ahead and hit broil. Seven minutes. And broil is safe with this because we're using the lower rack, so we're pretty far away from the, uh, the top. Uh, I guess probably could have done bake roast, but um, I think broil is going to give us more, more what we need. Seven minutes is up. There we go. Well, a couple little dark spots uh, where the, um, the tomato paste uh, burned, or pro it's probably actually the brown sugar that burned slightly. No big deal. It's going to taste great. All right, got another cup and a half of water in there. Got my potatoes. In the basket. Just drop the whole basket in. I'm gonna grab a pressure lid. Now it's already a little warm in there, so this won't take that long to get pressurized. We're gonna hit it on high. Go about six minutes. Fire it up, and we'll do a quick. Oops! Don't forget to seal it. We'll do a quick pressure release on that, and then hit the tender crisp. Just leave the water right in there. Hit tender crisp and um, crisp them right up. I think I'm going to start on my green beans here in a minute. I'm not going to do the green beans in the foodie, guys, because um, that would just take too long and everything's going to get too cold. I'm going to throw a little foil over top of this. Alright, just put some foil over top of that. That'll be fine. And um, over here, we got those potatoes in the basket. Uh, we've just sealed, so the timer is going to kick on here in a second. The foodie, it always um, just takes a couple more seconds after it seals before it, it, it kind of wants to make sure it's totally sealed, I guess. See a tiny little bit of steam, you probably can't see it on the camera, there's a tiny little bit of steam coming out, there it is. And so I guess that has to seal 100%. Before, there it goes. Uh, so we're going to do six minutes, quick release, throw it on. Um, Air crisp, 390, five, six minutes probably, and uh, they'll be good to go. They're gonna be cooked from the pressure. Uh, all we're doing is crisping them up. Coming up at the end of our pressure, we're gonna do a quick release. And done. All right, I know I said earlier I was gonna leave the water in and just hit, um, Air Chris, I'm actually going to drain the water. I thought about it, and I'm going to get better airflow underneath of the basket uh, with the water in. I'm not going to get any airflow under the basket, so they won't um, crisp up evenly. So just take two seconds. We'll pull the basket out, drain the water, throw the basket right back in. There we go. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Watch that steam, guys. Always lift it away from yourself. That is crazy hot. Let's get this going. Okay, it literally took me like 20 seconds to pull that out, drain the water, and put it right back in. Let's just go ahead and get her rocking here. This time we're gonna go with Air Crisp. 390 is our default. We're gonna pick, uh, I always go the wrong way. We're gonna pick, uh, let's do a set of 10 and then we'll just check it. That's what I like to do with Air Crisp. 
usually give it a little more than I need, and then I just open the lid and see how it's going. And I just checked the meatloaf over here, that boy, that is still piping hot. Not a problem with that cooling off at all during this process. Well, it looks like the potatoes are finished. Nice, golden, crispy. You can hear them, just, you can hear the crisp almost, can't you? Look at that. All right, let's put this on a plate. We're starving. Well, there you have it. Ninja Foodie, Grandma, with air quotes, Grandma's Meatloaf. Yukon Gold Potatoes. And of course the um, steamed string beans, they were not done in the foodie. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button, leave me some comments. Click that bell, you'll get a little alert the next time I put a video out. And I want to thank everybody for watching these videos. Thank everybody for the comments. Take care.